Well, unfortunately, the air quality in more, the south area of Morwell is still poor. It has uh, deteriorated a little today after a couple of days of, of fairly good air quality. And we've seen the, um, the good air quality as a result of the progress on the fire that the Fire Services Commissioner has told us. But however, as I said, the air quality is still not great. So our advice to those vulnerable people living in the southern area of Morwell, so that's people over 65, children aged under, pre uh, under school age, those with chronic heart or lung conditions and pregnant women, our advice to those groups is still that they strongly consider temporary relocation. And it's terrific that uh, many people have taken advantage of the Department of Human Services assistance to do this. Our advice to the remainder of people are the living in the other areas of Morwell or those not in those groups living in the southern part of Morwell remains the same, that they should take regular breaks from the smoke if possible, adhere to their asthma management plan if they have one, make sure that they take their, um, their medication as prescribed for any chronic heart or lung conditions. There, are, there continue to be opportunities for people to take breaks away from the smoke including the respite centre in Mowie, free public transport and a number of free, uh, free public events. To date we've had uh, 16, 1,692 people have accessed respite payments to enable them to take a break away from the smoke and 534 people have accessed relocation payments to assist them to implement that advice um, about relocation. Our general practitioners around the town are, report, are reporting increased numbers of cases of respiratory complaints, um, headaches, throat and eye irritation and unfortunately this is what we would expect to see as the short term health effects from the smoke. However, although the general pra practices have been busy, um, they are still coping and, and saying that the, the increased demand um, is, is not putting too much of a strain on them. Of course, we still have the Health Assessment Centre, which is open in Morwell, and we've now seen more than 1,500 people come through the Health Assessment Centre for basic health checks. Unfortunately, we haven't seen anything, um, anything that will concern us of the people that have gone through the Health Assessment Centre. And as before, looking at the possible severe end of things, Ambulance Victoria and the La Trobe Regional Hospital are not reporting any increase in demand. When do we think we might change our advice in terms of temporary relocation? Obviously that will depend on having a, a several days of, of good air quality, it will depend on advice from the Fire Services Commissioner that the fire is sufficiently under control that we wouldn't expect a flare up and there will be advice um, forthcoming about clean up of the Morewall area so that people have a safe and clean environment to return to. Right, thank you. Thanks Rosemary. Um, the fire, now we talked uh, in the last 24 hours about how successful the fire operation has been and continues to do so. Uh, yesterday afternoon the, the fire area was challenged um, significantly by wind speed and we saw uh, an in enhanced uh, intensity of the fire yesterday afternoon. I was actually at the fire yesterday afternoon, spent the afternoon um, in the open cut with both Chief Officer from CFA Ewan Ferguson and the Chief Officer from MFB Peter Rao and we experienced that, uh, that fire escalation. It didn't ex extend or uh, pass the area that was burning, but what it did do was become quite intense and generated a lot of smoke and heat to the point where, uh, as they were dropping water on the fire, uh, not only extinguishing the fire, but the amount of steam that was coming out of the ground tells you the amount of heat that's actually generated um, in, the, in the wall of the, the, the mine itself. Um, great work by our firefighters. They've held it, uh, but what they have got to do now is there's further heat in some parts generated by the excessive winds yesterday and that will be an ongoing challenge over the next uh, couple of days. The weather's good um, for firefighting, however on Saturday we see another day with uh, higher winds um, for the period and that again will challenge uh, firefighters to ensure that they've got the appropriate strategy in place uh, and they will, uh, they've got good plans that are working well. It's interesting to note the system of work that they're now using is uh, well mature, that is uh, they're using foams, they're using water, they're using water from trucks, they're using water from aircraft, uh, they're using ground crews with hose lines, uh, they're using the mine staff, the mines equipment and there's ex ex uh, extensive infrastructure being uh, built to support the fire operation to ensure that the su su uh, success is there and also there's enough water in particular parts of the mine for um, long duration, large volume flows of water. Uh, from that, obviously the issue for Morwell and Morwell residents is about smoke. Uh, we won't put a 
contain message on that fire or classify it contained until we've got sufficient fire down and we're still aiming for the end of the long weekend before we review that. So certainly Sunday, Monday is the instant controller's aim to be able to say that it is in that position, but obviously it's dependent on weather and how successful we are in operation, so that's critical. So the last 15% is still difficult and will take a number of days, and even after that we know there'll be some smoke come out of the mine for probably weeks, but it'll be in very isolated areas, um, very contained to spots of fire that will be managed and managed effectively. Um, from that, obviously community engagement goes on, and uh, the key issue for particularly led by DHS and other agencies today is to develop the clean-up plan. Um, Rosemary, as the Chief Health Officer, mentioned before that clean up's the next step to, uh, to understand what people will need to do to re-enter uh, and, and come back home. And it's broader than that, it's about cleaning streets, it's about the playgrounds, it's about the, the community needs uh, and amenity, uh, it's about the individual home, it's about the workplace. So it will be an extensive clean-up plan that's being put together and uh, that will certainly be communicated over the next number of days of what that means for those that live and work in Morwell and the surrounds, which will be really important. So it's not just a matter of putting a, a contained message on the fire, it's actually um, what are the steps that people will need to do to re-enter their properties and come back into more. I might leave it there just for questions. When do you think that might happen? When can people come home? Um, well, the fire, I think, is still going to put sufficient smoke up over the weekend that uh, the weekend everything will stay in place as per the, the messages issued. We'd like to think it's next week. Um, that's our aim, is get over Saturday, Sunday, uh, and be, uh, be in a position Monday to be very clear what we tell the residents of Moore. Uh, and uh, that's our aim, and I just hope the weather sticks with us to achieve that. Uh, we've certainly got everything in place to achieve it. It's really dependent on weather now and how the fire goes. And then the clean-up plan is important. Uh, it's really important to be able to clean up around the houses so people come back to a place that is clean. There's been a lot of speculation in the community that there was a fire already going in the mine on that day, on that Sunday. Um, can you knock that on the head? Um, no, it, it, I can knock it on the head. There's no doubt that we've got no reports of a fire that was already existing in the mine. Um, the fire has, uh, has progressed into the mine by uh, the Driffield fire and also um, the Hearns, Hearns Oak fire which travelled along the Princess Highway and both of those are still um, being investigated by police and forensics and also fire investigation from fire. So there's further work to be done there but it's, uh, it's clear that the fire has started uh, by spot or uh, entry of fire into the mine. Any truth um, in reports this morning that this arsonist may have struck again since the fire has uh, been I, I haven't got that, um, but there is an extensive arson team uh, there. I would suggest that uh, this isn't one off. This has been someone in an arson sense that's uh, played with fire, um, experimented with fire, and uh, normally arsonists don't, don't act in one, in one sense. They'll do it in, in multiple senses over multiple periods. and. Uh, if this is uh, an arson that's quite mature in the way in which they light fires, it could find that it goes back over a number of years. So um, police arson are obviously the lead in that uh, and they'll do uh, everything they need to and obviously fire will support them in every way they need to be supported. Any idea of what sort of money we're talking about that's, uh, talking that's been thrown at this fire? I mean, it must be... Oh, it's significant. We're in the, it's a multi-million dollar fire, um, without a doubt, in every aspect. Um, but it's, it's also... Uh, uh, it's bigger than that. Um, it's, one of the, it's one of the most significant fires that we've had in the state that's seen a multi-agency uh, national response in a fire, fire sense, um, and uh, that in itself is significant. Uh, only a small fire in, 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 in size of a fire, actually the physical size of a fire, but a complex one in the fact that it's in a mine, it's in, it's in um, splits between what is an operation of a mine and a disused part of a mine and uh, it's certainly got challenges about um, brown coal. Nearing the end of the fourth week, how are firefighters holding up? Uh, no, we're doing well. Uh, they're obviously changing their, their rotations. We've got crews in from interstate that are ongoing now. Uh, we've got MFB that are running uh, shifts that are changing daily, so they travel out of Melbourne um, by bus in the morning and travel back. We've got other crews that are down for four-day four periods. Uh, we're changing them, whether they be volunteer or career. Um, the critical thing about the morale of our firefighters is the system of work. They're still working two hours um, on, on site, out for two hours and then back on site for two hours. Now that, that sometimes uh, isn't the most efficient way but it's, it's particularly the most important way to manage our firefighters for their health and wellbeing and that's actually working quite well. The firefighters union has raised concern about uh, <coughs> firefighter fatigue? Um, I, the firefighters union uh, have been uh, in discussion with us all the way. We speak to them daily. 
uh, and they've raised them, that issue on multiple occasions and every time we've been able to answer, change, modify um, the way in which we work to ensure that all those things are in place. Uh, that's a constant. I think we're in, in one of those environments that um, the way we work, the fatigue issues, the health and safety will be challenging every day and that's why we've got systems around them to ensure that we are. Um, I've, I've looked at those systems. We've had auditors in to look at the systems. Um, we reviewed them internally and externally. Uh, they're systems that work and work well, but fatigue is an ongoing issue um, that we need to manage and manage effectively. How are things going in East Gippsland? How did they fare yesterday in the wind? Um, they did all right, actually. Across Victoria, uh, there was wind and, and warm weather across Victoria. There was a number of fires, uh, particularly in the northeast, that started by uh, lightning. Uh, none of those are on the, on, the, on the list now. They've all been contained. And East Gippsland is a, is a better position today than it was yesterday with, uh, with a couple of fires. We'll be moving, hopefully, to contained from going fires in the next 24 hours. So, so that's a good story. Uh, and East Gippsland, we've always focused on it because it uh, it's over 50 days of fire in East, East Gippsland. And those communities have had not only fire around them, but the constant of smoke. And uh, just like Morville, smoke can become very frustrating communities day after day um, when it's around in your, in your area. Uh, Dr Lester, uh, so if the fire is indeed contained by the end of Monday, you're still advising people who, who are in that vulnerable group to stay away and, until another warning is issued? That's right. We'll update our advice once we're satisfied that the air quality has been stable and the advice from the Fire Services Commissioner is that the fire is not likely to, to flare up. And then, then, as we mentioned, there will be a clean-up strategy to make sure that when residents and workers return that, the, uh, that more well is safe and clean for them. Week five um, next week, does that constitute long-term, do you think? I don't think so. The, the advice that we've received indicates that uh, the long-term health effects are from um, years of exposure. We haven't had any advice to the contrary which would lead us to change our, our thinking that we don't expect to see any long-term health effects from this level of exposure. And from that you'll bring kids back to schools in Moore following um, that advice from the Fire Services Commission next week? Yes, once, once we're in a position to be able to change our advice, then we will advise everyone, including uh, advice to the Department of Education, that it's safe to uh, bring the school children back to school in, in Morewell South. So how South would you Morewell. define uh, going into week five next week? What level of exposure is that? Medium, short term? Yes, well, the environmental health um, references usually describe short-term exposure as, as days to weeks and long-term exposure as years. So we would still be saying that on the, on the evidence that we have available to us that we wouldn't expect to see those long-term effects from this exposure. EPA is a bit of an announcement today too, if you want to. Do you just move over slightly? Sorry, Liz, thank you. Um, EPA will be um, installing some additional monitoring equipment uh, both at the Morwell East and in the Southern Morwell monitoring station. So if people are looking at our website, um, it, it, they may see that, uh, that, that it's offline for a couple of hours, but that's because we're uh, adding some additional monitoring uh, equipment to that. What will that monitor? Um, people have asked questions about the grey boxes on our monitoring um, monitoring on our website um, and it's going to cover off all those other parameters, sorry, a number of those other parameters that are included on our website. So filling in the gaps of what people haven't been... That's correct, to? yes. Can you go through what those gaps are? I'm sorry, I can't. Okay. So where are the monitoring stations going to be located? Uh, it's in the, in the existing monitoring stations in um, that southern Morwell area and in Morwell East. Um, the smoke that's over the community today, I suppose you just continue to monitor that um, as days go by? Absolutely, we're continuing to monitor the smoke. Um, uh, as Craig mentioned, there's been, been a period of respite over the last couple of days, but since the wind has swung back round to the southwest, the smoke has come back over more well. How are your crews holding up? Obviously, they're, um, they're working hard on the ground as well. Uh, look, uh, similarly to the firefighters, we've got teams rotating both in and out of the, uh, out of the area so that we can ensure that we've got continuity of service.